it is a true challenge at this evening time to attend a lecture. Um, uh, so your merits are already uh, written in the heavenly book of merits. Uh, I proposed to read with you. Thank you. I propose to, to read with you, uh, as we do it at the ITI, there is, you know, the, the methodology of the ITI, worldwide known methodology of the ITI, uh, ad fontes, back to the sources, uh, uh, to the original texts. And uh, so uh, I suppose, of course, that you all have Ready, already read the text, and uh, I. Uh, that's what, what we do in, at the ITI. Uh, you know it. Um, this text is taken from the second part of the second volume of the Summa. Uh, the second, the first part is the treatise on God. Uh, and creation, God, Trinity, creation. The second part is man. Uh, uh, the movement of man with his free will to God. Uh, and the third part uh, on Jesus Christ is uh, the mediator between God and man, Christ. Christ and his sacraments. That's the, uh, the frame of uh, the Summa, the, the most important work of St. Thomas Aquinas. Uh, the second part of the second book uh, deals with the virtues, the three divine virtues, faith, hope, and charity, and the four cardinal virtues, uh, prudence, justice, for, um, uh, uh, how is it in English? Hmm? Fortitude and um, um, uh, hmm? temperatio, yeah, uh, temperance, yeah. Uh, these four virtues are called cardinal, not because the cardinal are specialized in them, but because they are the cardines, the angles. Yeah. But all that's you know. So therefore, I want to uh, look immediately at the text uh, and concentrate on the key questions of these texts, because in my understanding, the second part, uh, the, the question on Charity is the key of the whole Summa. Uh, and if you have really studied, uh, especially the question 23, uh, what is charity, what is love, then you have the key uh, of the whole teaching of St. Thomas. And we will, in the two articles I want to read with you this evening, we find uh, really what is the deepest understanding of Christian life, uh, Christian anthropology, Christian understanding of, of God and man. Uh, so, uh, and astonishingly, the first article begins with the question whether caritas sit amicitia, is love, is caritas. I prefer to speak about caritas than of charity, because charity, you think immediately on the charitable work, which is an essential part of charity, but uh, caritas is, uh, is love. Uh, uh, is it a friendship? Uh, this question 
may be surprising why uh, is, is with that question he begins, is uh, charity uh, a friendship? Um, and as you know how it works in the Summa Theologica, first, of, first he begins always with objections. Uh, uh, no, it cannot be that charity is a friendship. Uh, I, I ask you, do you have yourself an idea? Charity, uh, uh, caritas, means mainly uh, uh, the love to God and God's love to us and the love between us. It's all the three together. Yeah. Uh, uh, what do you think uh, can be an objection? Why uh, caritas cannot be a friendship? Uh, he, he, he is always arguing, arguing against the, the, uh, the thesis. His thesis is, yes, caritas is a friendship, is friendship. Yeah. But he begins with objections. What do you think can be an argument against uh, this thesis that caritas is a friendship? Please, yeah. You can only have friendship between equals. Exactly. That's the key question. Uh, can there be a friendship between God and man? Uh, friendship can only be between, be, between equal. Yeah. Yeah. And therefore, it is not surprising that uh, uh, in Islamic understanding of the relation between God and man, friendship has no place. Yeah. Cannot be. Yeah. Uh, um, can somebody read the first objection uh, as we always do it? Yeah, please. Yeah. It would seem that charity is not friendship, for nothing is so appropriate to friendship as to dwell with one's friend, according to the philosopher. Now, charity is of men towards God and the angels, whose dwelling is not with them. Therefore, charity is not friendship. Exactly. That's what uh, you had already said. The first objection is uh, the equality, in inequality is so great, there cannot be friendship. Um, there's a second argument. Uh, uh, who reads the second argument? Objection to... Further, there is no friendship without return of love, but charity extends even to one's enemies, according to Matthew 44. Love your enemies. Therefore, charity is not friendship. Yeah. You cannot be friend with your enemy. Yeah. We drop the third uh, and uh, come immediately to... Uh, uh, what St. Thomas calls always the sed contra, uh, the, the main argument uh, is always uh, of great authority. Uh, one of the big questions uh, we have just discussed before uh, at, uh, at Agape, uh, uh, the authority of arguments, uh, what uh, what, uh, uh, what, what is the white, the, 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 the power of an argument? Yeah. Uh, for St. Thomas, um, because he's a theologian, uh, the, the strongest argument comes from scripture. Uh, that's uh, always a major argument. Uh, sometimes he quotes Aristotle, this is a uh, argumentum uh, in, in of reason, but uh, when he quotes scripture, then it is essential. So what is the, the, the authority? 
he is basing on his uh, understanding of charity. Uh, who it's please. On the contrary, yeah. it is written, I will not now call you servants, but my friends. Now this was said to them by reason of nothing else than charity. Therefore, charity is friendship. Yeah. Uh, uh, I did not uh, choose this article because this is my episcopal motto. Yeah. I have chosen as episcopal motto, vos autem dixi amicos, I have called you friends, not any longer call you servants. Yeah. Um, now, uh, I invite you to to see how St. Thomas builds up an argument. Uh, that's very important for your, your studies. Uh, uh, there are different ways to, to build up an argument. Uh, uh, sometimes St. Thomas begins with an uh, etymology. He takes a word and says, this, this word means that and that. Uh, and if you consider the meaning of this word, then he can start an argument. Or he begins uh, with an argument. Uh, uh, a, a there is a discussion. We will see in the second article there. He, he begins with arguments that are present in his time. Some say so, others say so. But if you consider closely, then you must say so. Yeah. So this, this, uh, this way of arguing is very, very helpful. So how, how does he argue in his responsio? Responsio is always the, the key, the, co the core article. Uh, what is the responsio? Uh, please, somebody uh, may read it. Yeah. I answer that, according to the philosopher, not every love has the character of friendship, but that love which is together with benevolence, when to wit we love someone so as to wish good to him. If, however, we do not wish good to what we love, but wish it's good for ourselves, thus we are said to love wine or a horse or the like. It is love not of friendship, but of a kind of concupiscence. For it would be absurd to speak of having friendship for wine or for a horse. Yet neither does well-wishing suffice for friendship, for a certain mutual love is requisite, since friendship is between friend and friend. And this well-wishing is founded on some kind of communication. Yeah, stop here. Stop here. Uh, yeah. Uh, non qui libet amor habet rationem amicitiae, sed amor qui est cum benevolentia. That's a very important word. St. Augustine has given once uh, a definition of love. Uh, uh, amo volo ut sis. I love that means I want you to be. Uh, I, I wish you good. Bene volentia. Uh, in Italiano uh, si dice quando due persone sono innamorati, uh, dicono ti voglio bene. Uh, in Italian, uh, when somebody is falling in love, he says, to uh, his girl or boyfriend, uh, ti voglio bene, ti voglio bene, uh, bene volentia. What is the specific of bene volentia? Yeah? Selfless, exactly. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is always addressed to somebody. 
ti voglio bene. Bene volentia for, for you. Yeah. Uh, uh, and therefore, uh, we cannot call uh, love of benevolentia uh, 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 if it is only something we wish for us. Nobis volumus. Yeah. If he, uh, uh, and therefore, St. Thomas says uh, that uh, 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 when we say uh, uh, that we love wine or we love a horse, well, I must say uh, St. Thomas had, had not yet read C.S. Lewis. Uh, if he had read uh, uh, The Horse and His Boy, uh, uh, he, he would probably have changed this argument. Uh, 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 this love is not friendship, but it's a kind of concupiscentia. It is not amor amicitie, but amor concupiscentie. I love wine, yeah, but the love does the wine does not love me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's no mutual uh, relation. Yeah. Uh, uh, mutual relation is uh, ridiculum enim estitere quod aliquis habit abicitiam ad vinum vel ad equum, sed nec benevolentia sufficit ad rationem amicitiae, sed requiritu quedam mutua amatio. Uh, mutual love. I cannot say that I am friend uh, of the Queen of England because she doesn't even know me. Yeah. <laughs> a friendship needs, needs that at least you know each other. Yeah. And uh, uh, if somebody says, uh, I am your friend, but uh, you, you do not love him, then, uh, then it's not friendship. Mutua amatio. Mutua amatio. What makes a mutua amatio? Aristotle says, uh, amicus est amico amicus. Amicus est amico amicus. The friend is friend of the friend. Friendship is always mutual. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the beauty of friendship. Yeah. Idem velle, idem nolle, says St. August, Augustine also on friendship. Idem velle, to, to have the same will, uh, and uh, idem nolle, uh, not, uh, to, to not want the same. Yeah. Nolle. Uh, how do you say? Yeah. Not to want. We, we share that do, we do not want this. And we share that we want this, both. Yeah. And now this key point is, and this well-wishing is founded on some kind of communication. Friendship without communication is not possible. Uh, and that's, that's so important. A uh, friendship, when you, when you do not practice the friendship, when there is no communication, the friendship dies. Yeah. And if you, if, if, uh, you, you, you have no relation to Jesus, uh, then the friendship with Jesus dies. Yeah. That's uh, very simple. Super aliquam communicationem. Yeah. And now comes the, the most important, and uh, you have all copies, you can underline as much as you want. If you, uh, if you see my summa, yeah, 
I underline it with different colors. Yeah. When it is a very beautiful argument, I underline it in green. Yeah. When it is very strong argument in red, and when it is a divine argument in blue. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> that's my, my hang up. Yeah. Uh, um, my spleen. Uh, so, next sentence, please. Accordingly, since there is a communication between man and God, inasmuch as he communicates his happiness to us, some kind of friendship must needs be based on this same communication, of which it is written, God is faithful, by whom you are called unto the fellowship of his Son. The love which is based on this communication is charity. Wherefore, it is evident that charity is the friendship of man for God. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, I'm not against English, but I find Latin is much easier than English. Talis autem mutua benevolentia, fundato super aliquam communicationem. Cum igitur sit aliqua communicatio hominis ad Deum, secundum quod nobis suam beatitudinem communicat. There is a communication between God and man, between man and God, which is the basis of friendship. If there is no communication, uh, Uh, if you, if you, there is no possible communication between us and God, then of course there cannot be any friendship. Yeah. The inequality. Yeah. But talis cum sit aliqua communicatio hominis ad Deum secundum quod nobis suam beatitudinem communicat. Insofar as he communicates to us his happiness, his beatitude. How does it work? How does God communicate us his friendship, his beatitude? Is there a real communication from God to us? Scripture, yeah, yeah. What Jesus said today in, in the gospel, in, in his uh, talk with Nicodemus, uh, faith. When you believe in God, you touch God. It's a, faith is, uh, faith is a communication. Uh, also between humans. Yeah. Yeah. I, I trust you, I believe you. That's a communication. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the basis of uh, all what we believe about God is that he has communicated us something of himself something of his self. Uh, sorry that I speak about Russians today. It is allowed to speak about Russians. Uh, um, um, I had a, an old Russian friend in Vienna. He has died a long time ago. Uh, uh, he was a noble aristocrat from, from Moscow who had escaped the, French, the, the Russian Revolution and became a, in the French army an officer in the, in the uh, Légion étrangère, uh, uh, Fremden Legion, uh, foreign, foreign legion, foreign legion. And he told me this story about a German soldier in the 
foreign legion who was a very brutal man. And they had, they had a little battle in Af somewhere in Africa and he was wounded and uh, he came, was close to death. And uh, Nicola, this, this friend, was an officer and this soldier asked him, can you please, can you come? And then this soldier who was really a rude man said this astonishing word, do you think when I die now that God will give me something of himself? Que Dieu va me donner quelque chose de lui-même. Uh, and uh, Nicola was surprised uh, and he said, well, well, yes, I believe he will. But why do you ask this? Uh, and then this soldier said, listen, uh, I have had a very brutal life. Uh, when I die now, I will appear uh, in, uh, in the, be, before God and all the saints will say, oh no, this man cannot enter. This man cannot enter. But if God gives me something of himself, si Dieu me donne quelque chose de lui-même, they will, they cannot say anything against me. I never forget, I was a very young Dominican at the time, but I never forget how he told about this this soldier, and that's exactly the experience about uh, what St. Thomas is speaking here. Uh, if God gives us something of himself, then we can become his friends, because then he has given something of himself, and then we have become really equal by himself, then he has made us his friends. Yeah. And he has made us really his friends. Yeah. So the story of, uh, that Nikola Rajewski told me many years ago, more than 50 years ago, uh, I never forget because it, is, it, is, it makes visible what St. Thomas says here. Uh, cum sit aliqua communicatio hominis ad Deum secundum quod nobis suam beatitudinem communicat. There is a communication from us to God because he has given us something of himself to us. He has made us his friends. He has made us his equals. And then there is one word that uh, is for me, the, I, I fell in love of this sentence many years ago, and for me it is the most, uh, it is one of the most beautiful expressions of what Christian life is about. Super hang communicationem, there is a, uh, is a printing error, uh, super hang communicationem, opportet aliquam amicitiam fundari. Super hang communicationem opportet aliquam amicitiam fundari. To build up a friendship. That's the shortest expression of Christian life. Build up a friendship with God. But this is possible because it's a communic uh, he has communicated us his own life, uh, grace, uh, beatitude, himself, not something but himself. He has communicated himself through his word, through scripture, through the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Amo.
Homo autem super han communicationem fundatus est caritas. That's caritas. Build up a friendship on this basis. And you say, can say the whole Christian life is uh, 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 like in a nutshell uh, uh, in this word, fundari amicitiam. Build up a friendship. And of course it is the most beautiful expression of what is the meaning of human life. Build up friendship. Fundari amicitiam. Super hang communicationem. Uh, yeah. And peacemaking is friendship making. I think in this dramatic time we are living in. The most, uh, the, 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 the most we can desire, we can hope and pray for is that friendship grows between those who have to have to be enemies instead of being friends. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, because the, the second article is so, so important and the time is running out, uh, we take only the, uh, the second answer, reply to objection two, and then we jump into the second article, which is a very, very important. Who reads the reply to objection two? That's the question of, can, can you love your enemies? Uh, uh, if charity is friendship, uh, can you have charity to people who are not your friends, but your enemies? And St. Thomas has a beautiful argument, which is very practice, practical. Friendship so, extends to a person in two ways. First, in respect of himself. And in this way, friendship never extends but to one's friends. Secondly, it extends to someone in respect of another, as when a man has friendship for a certain person, for his sake he loves all belonging to him, be they children, servants, or connected with him in any way. Indeed, so much do we love our friends, that for their sake we love all who belong to them, even if they hurt or hate us, so that, in this way, the friendship of charity extends even to our enemies whom we love out of charity in relation to God, to whom the friendship of charity is chiefly directed. What is this argument about? Can you say it with your words? Love our enemies for the sake of God. Uh, uh, um, by, by virtue or... or uh, but why should we uh, f uh, love the enemies for the sake of God? Ah, that's the point. Uh, yeah. uh, he first has loved our enemies and therefore uh, we can love them because God loves them. Yeah. It's not easy uh, uh, to think that God loves my enemy, yeah, but he does. Yeah. yeah. Now, let's jump in the second article, which is uh, a more uh, philosophical question, theological question, uh, and uh, uh, that's... Uh, 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 they, 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 they have not given the article, the name of the article. The, the, the question is, Utrum caritas sit aliquid creatum in anima. What is it now, love, in our soul? Uh, if uh, friendship is based <clears throat> on the communication that God has given us, is Charity is love, is caritas, something divine in us? Is it something divine? 
Is it uncreated? Is it God himself? The question is, does God love himself when we love? Through his love? Or are we really capable, we are really capable to love God? Is that something that we do, or is it God who does it in us? It's a very, uh, it's not fantasy question. Yeah. I propose you to pass to the uh, um, to um, the answer uh, in this edition the, the, the yeah you you did you find where it is uh, I answer that the master looks sorrowful into this question yeah um, do you understand the question? Uh, if friendship with God is based on something that God gives us, yeah. uh, is love something divine? Or is it something we do? Can I say, I love God? Or, or is it that God works in me his love? It's not an abstract question. It is, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, perhaps we read first the, uh, on contrary, Augustine says. Yeah. Uh, who reads the, said contra, please, yeah? Yeah. On the contrary, Augustine says, by generating in the movement of the soul towards the enjoyment of God for his own sake. But the movement of the soul is something created in the soul. Therefore, charity is something created in the soul. Motus animi ad fuendum Deo. Uh, the charity, St. August says, August, is a movement of the soul. Yeah. Of course, if... Uh, you love each other, that's a movement of the soul, motus animi. A movement of the soul. But a movement of the soul is a movement of my soul. So it's something created, it's something of mine. I love. Can you read the response here? I answer. I answer that uh, the master looks throughout roughly into this question in 17 of the first book and concludes that charity is not something created in the soul, but it's the Holy Ghost himself dwelling in the mind. Yeah. Is the motion of the Holy Ghost, is the Holy Ghost himself dwelling in the mind? Who is the master? That's not Jesus. Uh, master, uh, who is the master? Hmm? Yeah, exactly, Peter Lombardus. Yeah, uh, that's the the handbook for all uh, students in medieval students. They had to to prepare the exams on the master, the the sentences, the sentencen of uh, Petrus Lombardus. Um, so uh, he concludes that charity is not something created in the soul but the Holy Ghost himself dwelling in us sounds very beautiful the Holy Ghost in us is loving God continue please nor does he mean to say that this movement of love whereby we love God, is the Holy Ghost himself. 
but that this movement is from the Holy Ghost without any in intermediary habit, whereas other virtuous acts are from the Holy Ghost by means of the habits of other virtues, for instance, the habit of faith or habit uh, or hope or of some other virtue. And this he said on account of the accidents of charity. Stop here, please, yeah? Um. Hmm. This is, uh, this is a, uh, an important element in St. Thomas' teaching uh, that um, uh, every movement of the soul uh, must uh, come from a habitus. Uh, uh, hab habitudo, how do you say? A habit. Uh, um, uh, a habit uh, comes through uh, fit iteratis activus, says Aristotle. Habit uh, comes through uh, repeated acts. Uh, if you uh, are uh, uh, angry in the morning when you get up, yeah, or uh, bad mood in the morning, and you uh, overcome your uh, uh, bad mood in the morning. The first time it is difficult, the second time it is difficult, the third time it becomes a little bit less difficult. And when you have trained it and have repeated it again and again, it becomes a habit. And you get up in the morning and everybody is surprised about your smiling. This is what we, we call, you have acquired a virtue. Yeah. A virtue is a habit, a good habit, and a vice is a bad habit. Yeah. Uh, and uh, alas, bad habits produce vices, and good habits produce virtue. Yeah. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, All move, movements, uh, the, 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 all movements in us uh, need a, a habit. Uh, that's also true for faith and for hope. Yeah? A habit of faith uh, and habit of uh, hope. But um, uh, Peter Lombardus, Petrus Lombardus, thinks that Charity is something so great, so great, that this is not a human habit, but it's God himself who acts in us because of the excellence of charity. Et hoc dicebat propter excellentiam caritatis. Charity is the greatest virtue, and it's so great that it is divine. God acting himself in us. But, but, and now we come to the argument of St. Thomas, and this is very, very important. Please continue. But if we consider the matter Right. This would be, on the contrary, detrimental to charity. For when the Holy Ghost moves the human mind, the movement of charity does not proceed from this motion in such a way that the human mind be merely moved without being the principle of this movement, as when the body is moved by some extrinsic motive power. For this is contrary to the nature of the voluntary act whose principle needs to be in itself a state of, state of the world, so that it would follow that to love is not a voluntary act, which involves a contradiction, since love of its very nature implies an act of the will. Yeah. Uh, we continue later. Um, St. Thomas... Uh, it's beautifully said, 
but si, si quis recte consideret, hoc madigis redundat in caritatis detrumen. It sounds so pious, but in reality, it's a damage for what charity, what love is really. Because it takes away the voluntary aspect. And then uh, the Holy Spirit would move us uh, without all our own will. But without own, our own will, uh, this is not dilectio. It would not be my act. It, wouldn't, it would not be, I love you, I love God. It would be that I am moved like, like a stone, like a, uh, and not moved by my own movement. And therefore, uh, uh, that would be against, uh, against freedom, against the voluntary uh, act, and it would exclude uh, the ratio meriti. It would have no merit. Uh, it's not a meritorious act if I am moved, uh, uh, not by myself, And you see, this is, uh, I always say, this is uh, somehow it gives the, the key of the Christian understanding of uh, human freedom and how God wants us to be free. Because he wants us to be actor ourselves, to act ourselves to act voluntarily ourselves. And if, if it is against my will, I have no merit. Uh, if I do charity uh, because I'm obliged to do it and not because I want to do it, then I have no merit. A forced act has no merit. Uh, is that, can you, can you follow that? Tolerato ratio voluntari. It would take away the voluntary aspect. And therefore, lead, read the, 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 the end of this article. Likewise, neither can I, it be said that the Holy Ghost moves the will in such a way to the act of loving as so the will were an instrument for an instrument, an instrument, where is the... We have no pagination. Uh, Ich habe es jetzt leider auseinandergenommen. Ähm. Ah ja. ja. Can you continue to read? I have, I have taken the sheets apart. Hm? Why can I stand again to say that the Holy Ghost moves the will in such a way to the act of loving? as though the will were an instrument. For an instrument, though it be a principle of action, nevertheless has not the power to act or not to act. For then again, the act will cease to be voluntary and meritorious, whereas it has been stated above, that the love of charity is the root of merit. And given that the will is moved by the Holy Ghost to the act of love, it is necessary that the will also should be the efficient cause of the act. Now, no act is perfectly produced by... Uh, stop for, stop for, here, uh, for a moment here. Uh, it is necessary 
that the will also should be the efficient cause of that act. Uh, this is so important uh, because uh, one of the key teachings of St. Thomas is God has not only created the world, uh, has not only created the being, but he has given the being to be active, to be source of action, uh, to be oneself source of action. That's the, the fundamental difference between uh, the Islamic philosophy in the medieval uh, in the medieval time and the Christian thinking. Uh, the Christian thinking is the uh, the acceptance and the insistence of the so-called secondary causes. We are real causes of our acts. But not because we are autonomous, completely autonomous, but because God has created us with freedom. He has given us to be act, active, to act ourselves. And this is the, the, the condition of a true friendship between God and man. If we are only moved by God and not moved by God to move ourselves, yeah, then there is no relation, there is no friendship. And the great difference between uh, uh, Averroes, the great Islamic philosopher with whom St. Thomas is always in discussion, and the Christian philosophy is that for uh, for Averroes, there's only one actor, that's God. And all that is uh, happening is, in, in last resort, done by God, uh, the unique causality of God. And the Christian view is that God is so great that he has given his creature the capacity of acting, and the greatest capacity of acting, self-acting, is uh, the gift of freedom uh, and of free will. So, uh, continue, please. We, co we are coming to an end. Now, long act is perfectly produced by an active power unless it be connectional to that power of reason of some form which is the principle of that action. Wherefore, God, who moves all things to their due ends, bestow on each thing the form, whereby it is inclined to the end, appointed to it by him. And in this way, he ordered all things sweetly. But it is evident that the act of charity surpasses the nature of the power of the will, so that, therefore, unless some form be superadded to natural power, inclining it to the act of love, this same act would be less perfect than the natural acts and the acts of the other powers, nor would it be easy and pleasurable to perform. And this is evidently untrue, since no virtue has such a strong inclination to its act as charity has, nor does any virtue perform its act with so great pleasure. Therefore, it is most necessary that for us to perform the act of charity, there should be in us some habitual form superadded to the natural power, inclining that power to the act of charity, and causing it to act with ease and pleasure. With ease and pleasure. Isn't that beautiful? With ease and pleasure. Uh, love there is nothing more easy and uh, pl pleasurable uh, than to love. Of course, uh, to come to the virtue of love, to come to every virtue, it needs uh, uh, effort, it needs repetition, it, 
it needs practice. Yeah. But, uh, 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 and therefore, therefore, we need for, for every action, we need uh, the basis of this action, the capacity, the, what St. Thomas calls the form, uh, the, the form that, that makes it possible, the intelligence, the free will, uh, our natural powers, all that is necessary to act. But to come to the act of love that surpasses the natural inclination. Also, the natural inclination is, uh, 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 sh shows that uh, love, it is very paradox. Uh, love is, so to say, the most natural for, the, for, for us. Uh, and nevertheless, it needs a supernatural form to be performed because it surpasses our nature. That's what Pascal said, l'homme surpasse infiniment l'homme. Man surpasses infinitely man uh, because charity is something that is our deepest inclination. We want to love, we want to be loved, and, and we are happy and only happy when, when we love. Uh, and hap and uh, uh, meritorious is our love. It is really our love. Uh, but uh, uh, therefore, uh, we need uh, aliqua habitualis forma super adita potentia naturali something that is going over our natural power. Uh, love is the most natural for man. And nevertheless, we know that to love, we need more than our natural power. And this is the paradox of, of, of Christian life. It is love is natural and supernatural. And, uh, and it is uh, through this supernatural form, it, it inclines us to act charitably, to act with love, and that makes uh, our acting uh, prompte et delectabilita, uh, to act with ease and pleasure. And you can see that in the saints, uh, it, it always looks very easy when you, when you, uh, when you see the, the life of the saints. It, it looks so easy. Uh, but it's, it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's not, uh, uh, an easy going thing. Uh, uh, because it is supernatural. And it's only possible to, to fulfill this, this friendship with God and the friendship, uh, a life out of this friendship with God with the help of God, with this supernatural form that gives us, that is grace. Yeah. So, my dear friends, it is much more than one hour already. Um, uh, but uh, I hope you, you will read it again and again, and perhaps, perhaps you, you can read it in Latin, because the Latin is so beautiful. It's, it's a very easy Latin, very simple, yeah. uh, and so expressive. Um, okay. Um, I think we...